American families are struggling. There's a lot of misery in America today. And these numbers understate what people are feeling and the amount of pain which is occurring in middle class America. Not only is the 8.2% number unacceptably high and one that's been in place now for over 41 months, but in addition, if you look at the broader analysis of people who are out of work or have dropped out of the workforce or that are underemployed in part-time jobs needing full-time work, it's almost 15% of the American public. And then there are those that are working but are working in jobs well beneath their skill level, are working in multiple part-time jobs, kids that are coming out of college not being able to find work, veterans coming home not being able to do anything but stand on an unemployment line. These are very difficult times for the American people. There are other numbers that are troubling. The manufacturing reports of the last several weeks indicate that manufacturing is not growing either domestically or in our exports as we would have expected at this stage. And of course, that's a long-term trend that's very disturbing and troubling. The President's policies have clearly not been successful in reigniting this economy, in putting people back to work, in opening up manufacturing plants across the country. The heartland industries where manufacturing occurs are struggling by virtue of policies on the part of the President that have not worked. The highest corporate tax rates in the world do not create jobs highest regulatory burdens in our nation's history, those do not create jobs. Trade policies that have not opened up new markets for American goods, particularly in Latin America, those don't create new jobs. Failing to effectively crack down on China for cheating and stealing American jobs, that has not helped. The President's policies have not gotten America working again, and the President's going to have to stand up and take responsibility for it. I know he's been planning on going across the country and celebrating what he calls forward. Well, forward doesn't look a lot like forward to the millions and millions of families that are struggling today in this great country. It doesn't have to be this way. The President doesn't have a plan, hasn't proposed any new ideas to get the economy going, just the same old ideas of the past that have failed. I have a plan. My plan calls for action that will get America working again and create good jobs, both near-term and long-term. It includes finally taking advantage of our energy resources, building the Keystone Pipeline, making sure we create energy jobs and we convince manufacturers that energy will be available and low cost in America. It means opening up new markets for American trade, particularly in Latin America where the opportunities are extraordinary. It means cracking down on China when they cheat making sure they don't steal our jobs unfairly. It means bringing our tax rates down, our marginal tax rates down, and cutting out the exemptions and deductions and loopholes that are unfair in many cases. In other cases, we're going to limit those deductions and exemptions so that we maintain our revenue through growth and through limiting of these special deals, but bring our tax rates down so they're competitive and attractive for jobs to come back to America. It means having a government that sees its role as encouraging enterprise rather than crushing it with a burden of new and unnecessary regulation and with outmoded regulations that haven't been cleaned up in years and years. And finally, it means having a health care plan that focuses on bringing down the cost of health care for American families, not just adding new expenses and new taxes to the American people. This is a time for America to choose whether they want more of the same whether unemployment above 8% month after month after month is satisfactory or not. It doesn't have to be this way. America can do better, and this kick in the gut has got to end.